part of every pre-dive check is ensuring that this scuba valve is open. But let's take a look inside to see how it actually works. These valves are not complicated. They have some parts on the inside that need to be replaced on a regular service. That service should be conducted by somebody who's qualified to do it. Now I'm qualified to inspect, clean, and service valves and cylinders. I'm also qualified to teach others how to do it. The purpose of this video isn't to show you how to service your own valve, and I don't think that you should service your own valve. Leave that up to a qualified professional. However, it is helpful to look at the internals because then we can gain some insight on how the valve works and how to care for our valves better. So I have a couple examples here, a cutaway valve and then some valve parts for a valve that's currently being serviced. And just using some general terminology, we have this exterior locking nut, a spring, a washer, the valve hand wheel, a bonnet nut, a washer, an o-ring, the stem, and the seat. So the seat is what makes the actual airtight seal. The stem, you can see these threads, so that goes all the way out, and this gets threaded onto that stem, and all these other parts are in between. Now the valve seat, you can see, has this indentation here. That's from the cone inside the valve body that it seals up against. This slot fits on top of the seat here. And all together, minus the valve hand wheel, we have something that looks like this. So the green in here is the seat, and we can see the stem. And as I rotate the stem, I'm threading that seat in and out. So when I open the seat here, gas travels, fills up this chamber, and that's pressurized, and then it comes out of this hole here. And that's why when you turn a valve on, you'll sometimes feel that hand wheel get tight. That's the stem and these parts being under pressure. So the valve hand wheel has that square. That square matches up with the stem here, which is also square. And that's what turns that seat. It's a pretty simple operation. Now looking at these parts that are in here for service, I can learn a couple of things about how this valve was being used. First off, we've got a lot of corrosion on the bonnet nut. There's also a lot of corrosion on the stem and the seat itself has corrosion and it's very worn down. The indentation is super deep here. You can compare that to a new seal like this. Obviously it doesn't have an indentation yet because it hasn't matched up with the cone, but you see how nice and shiny and pretty that is. So what I can learn from that is that this person was not washing the inside of their valve and they're not putting water underneath the hand wheel and letting it shoot out from one side to another to get all the internal parts clean. Something else I notice is the extrusion on this washer. So that should be flat if we look at a brand new one. And this is the washer that sits against this bonnet nut. So that right there. Now, if we are opening a valve and we're really cranking down, we're going to mush that washer right out the bonnet nut because we're just pressing it against that brass over and over again. Same for if I turn a valve off and I crank it down. That's going to mush that washer and extrude it out the bonnet nut like this. So the two things I can see here is that this valve wasn't getting rinsed properly and they were over cranking the valves when they turned them on or off. And those are the two most common things that you see with valves. So ensure that when you're rinsing your cylinder that you shoot water underneath the hand wheel. And when you're opening and closing valves, be gentle. Valves are really sensitive and we don't wanna wear these parts out prematurely. So there's your overview on how a valve works. Now, if you're interested in learning how to service these valves, or visually inspect or clean cylinders, reach out to me for more information on that training. Thank you for watching.